with a personnel of less than 600 men, arrayed against a foe numbering in the millions, it has been possible through careful planning and through highly developed methods of training and study courses and with active alignment in wholehearted cooperation of local law enforcement agencies for the Federal Bureau of Investigation to carry on a successful campaign of detection and apprehension of the most deadly characters in the history of American criminality. In only nine cases, in three years, have we found it necessary to shoot and kill dangerous criminals, and then only in the protection of our own lives. We make no excuse for the efficient, honest, and straightforward law The greatest deterrent to crime is the knowledge on the part of the criminal that there will be sure detection, swift apprehension, and unfailing punishment. And if I may again revert to the subject of youth, there is a necessity that this be made a maxim in every home. Nothing weighs upon me so much as the knowledge that one out of five of all of our criminals in the United States today is of less than voting age. These boys and girls go to the very door of the penitentiary, believing that in some way they still will be able to defeat the law because through lack of proper education and religious training, they have been allowed to foster the belief that they could make crime pay. The time has come a violator to obtain easy freedom. So many dangerous criminals who have no right whatever to freedom are being turned loose that public sentiment necessarily is outraged against the parole system, when in truth it is not the system which is at fault, but the derelictions of those who administer it. If the proponents of parole really want to help the parole man, then let them do so by working ceaselessly for the eradication of obvious faults. Let them help the parole man along the straight path to reform by keeping the recidivist, the confirmed criminal, the sex pervert, and multiple murderer where he belongs, in prison. The most terrible 